what does the expression selling the soul to sell newspapers really mean? According to the Cambridge Idioms Dictionary, second edition, <laughs> to sell your soul means, quote, to do something bad in order to succeed or get money or power. Alternatively, to get indulged in doing wrong deeds or committing crimes just to get what you want. Now, I want to make it clear in vigorously supporting this proposition that I do not for a moment suggest that every journalist or every newspaper is determined to mislead the public. But I'm afraid, with great deference to Stephen, having sat in the criminal court since 1982, that I sometimes wake up on the morning after the day before and ask myself, was that really the case I was in yesterday? Or am I reading about something from some different corner of the planet? I was called to the bar in 1982, and I am very proud to have been a publicly funded defender since 1983. And I repeat that my branch of my profession, the publicly funded branch, which is proudly consistent these days of a very diverse and mixed class of individuals, is frequently the target of press distortion. In 2014, for example, publicly funded lawyers such as myself were driven to strike after £215 million was stripped from legal aid by successive governments. A Lord Chancellor, Chris Grayling, who had as much experience of the justice system as Donald Trump does of foreign diplomacy. A man who sought to hand legal aid over to Eddie Stobart, a haulage company. And how did the Daily Mail cover this story? The Daily Mail targeted a female barrister who was carrying a Mulberry handbag and focused on the fat cat issue. And if that's not selling the soul to sell newspapers, I don't know what is. Because the real story there was the destruction of the criminal justice system, not a handbag, which could well have been as fake as the theme of the story. Of course, when, when, countless journalists were prosecuted for phone hacking, the fat cats rolled out the richest lawyers in the land to defend them, not the publicly funded ones, but the top grade privately paid lawyers. So I do support this proposition, and I draw further from cases I've been involved in, in which I have seen the press distort the facts with the inevitable inference that this was being done for the sale of newspapers. I defended a 15-year-old girl with multiple GCSEs for murder. The headlines branded her a notorious killer, when in fact all she had done was to be swept up with a gang, believing that another boy was going to get a slap when in fact he was stabbed to death by a violent crew of thugs. But she was branded a notorious killer when anybody in court, anybody respecting the evidence, could not even have begun to form that view. And let me very briefly go back to Hillsborough, if I may, because my weeks at the Hillsborough Inquiry will live with me forever. The Sun headline following those unforgettably traumatic events at Hillsborough quite simply read, quote, the truth. Liverpool fans were said to have urinated on police, pickpocketed the dead. Victims were allegedly prevented from being given the kiss of life. Was this not the selling of the soul for the purpose of the selling of newspapers? When the recent inquiry shows quite the opposite. 